Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. In a previous video, I had mentioned that I wanted to participate with Mass Make March, and I did it last year, absolutely loved it. But I had quite a bit of completed ephemera, and before I allowed myself to do anything for Mass Make March, I wanted to see what I already had. So I used the category sorters that I had, and I cleared out some bins, and I put all the makes, the completed ephemera makes that I had into these, these envelopes so that I could see exactly how much I had of any one thing. And it's turned out to be really helpful for me because it allows me to see what I need and what I don't need. For example, I don't have a ton of coin envelopes. I don't have very many belly bands, but I have like four or five envelopes full of certain pieces. And it turns out that I had mentioned I wanted to start with notepads, which are one of my favorite things to make. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. There we go. One of my favorite things to make. But as I was sorting and putting things away, I realized that I have quite a few notepads already ready to go. And I am going to show you what I mean by one of the reasons they're among my favorite things to make. So notepads to me are, I think I mentioned it in a previous video, this to me would be a booklet. I with this orientation opens to the left and opens this way, that would be a booklet. Oops, sorry, Let, let's get back in frame there. Sorry about that. So this would be a book or a booklet. If it opens up to the top, that's more of a notepad orientation. If it opens to the bottom, that's to me more like a matchbook. And that's just my own personal system for making. When I have scrap paper and I'm wanting to clear some scraps, or I have offcuts of paper that I've used for journaling cards or what have you, I often use them to combine and make notepads. Now, I like to sew the tops of these notepads because it's quick and it's easy and my machine's right next to me, but you can glue them or you can staple them or you can do whatever. So when I've got extra bits or offcuts or what have you, I make little extra notepads and then I keep these blank notepads in a little sleeve so that when I'm needing something to make or I'm needing something to fill a pocket, I can make these notepads. I also consider scrap notepads notepads. So these are all the same paper, paper, the same type of paper, essentially the same size. These are scrap notepads. And these are, again, something that I have that is just using little bits of scrap and combining them. And I sew along the top. And then I can tuck these over a belly band or into a card or into a lot of things. And I don't need to make more, but I will show you how I create them. And more importantly, I'll show you what I can do with them. So when I've got extras, I make them and I put them in these. And these are just some of the ways that you can utilize notepads. And that's because I do most of my journaling as hidden journaling spots are not necessarily directly on the page. Notepads um, work really well for me. So these are just some, and there's more, some of the ways that you can utilize notepads. And in fact, I need, I had to order more of those um, envelopes so that I would have enough for the notepads. So that gives you an idea. And I'm just going to toss this over here, tuck this over here so that I can toss them in when I'm done. All right, so flip up notepads, just a super simple flip up. Sometimes there'll be a decoration on the front, sometimes not. Uh, sometimes I'll use cardstock to, fr to front and back it, and sometimes I won't. It can be open to the side or it can open to the top, but then for me, a notepad lifts up to the top. And I like them because they're super versatile. You can make them in any size with any scraps, and you can use them in any journal to make your journaling a little bit more private if you choose to. So you can add a little bit of lace if you want to the top or just leave it blank. You can make it with a part of a pocket. You can doesn't have to be the full side. So I could still write on this and have a little notepad for some extra journaling on the end. Doesn't have to be a full, full size or full piece to make a good journaling notepad. 
and it can be narrow it can be tall like i said it can open to the side or lift up the top so that is just one of many many ways to make notepads and a previous video not too terribly long ago I showed this way and it was based on something that Frida Geppner had made and these are all fold over I, I don't remember it flap notepads I guess so there's notepads underneath and these two closable flaps just to decorate them sorry I'm gonna have to make sure I stay in focus is that better okay so there's a I've got a whole bunch of those um, Again, just using the notepad and then some fold over flips or fold over straps. There's some with lace, there's some without lace, there's some with the Tim Holtz ephemera pack cards, there's some without. Um, some use, use tags, some use note cards. There's just a ton of ways that you can make them like this. This one is one that's been around for a while and you just punch you make a tag and you punch the top and the bottom edge of the tag with whatever decorative punch you've got and then inside of it is a notepad here this one was upside down inside of it's a notepad so that's just another way to use a strip of rectangular strip of cardstock or pattern paper and create a notepad inside and i've got a couple of those you can do the trifold or gatefold i'm sorry gatefold bits as notepads so you can see here I've got a little notepad just tucked inside there and I can orient it whichever way I choose and like I said they're just really handy to have as a tuck and here's another little gatefold this is a super simple one here is a notepad here is a journaling card and here is a concertina notepad just a cute little bundle with some scrap card stuck and here again is just a little bit different opening the same idea a notepad a scrap notepad some journaling cards and a little mini uh, bookmark or journaling tag just again notepads are handy and by having them on hand you can use them for a lot of different things I can you can also make them with a variety of scraps so like this would be one when I'm done with a project and I have a bunch of scraps left sorry I keep going out of focus there um, I have a bunch of scrap left I'll get a piece of card and just pick some of the random pieces and combine them sorry I'm trying to get the lighting right here okay combine them to make these scrap notepads and you can do it with paper and lace just lace just paper you can combine them however you want you can sew them you can tie them um, here I put I just stamped a little bit and did a rub on and then I just wrapped it with a piece of seam binding so options these are ones i had a whole bunch of you can see i had some long leftover strips of black cardstock and i wanted to utilize those so i folded them in half and then i made scrap notepads to put inside and i just used a rub on or a sticker and a stamp to decorate the top piece and i have a whole bunch of those and then they can be tucked into a pocket inside of a journal or into a belly band or what have you so you can see those are really quick and easy to make and a super great way to tuck into a variety of journals this one's slightly different but it's essentially the same idea with a scrap notepad you can just do the notepad directly on the front without having a flip up so this is my notepad and I just decorated the top piece just a tiny bit I put a scrap on it I put a sticker on it and that's ready to tuck into a journal so it's still a notepad but I altered it slightly to put some decoration on the front here I just did a full card and it's still a notepad so you can see there's lots of different ways that you can quickly and easily decorate those notepads then there are a ton of other ways that you can utilize notepads here is a notepad on a dangle Right? it's a super simple dangle I can make it as a tuck I can hang it on the top of a book or a page it's as a dangle here is a notepad tag it drops down and closes up with a hidden notepad so if you didn't want something front and center here it is just as a fold over booklet here it is a notepad in a little file folder 
and here is one in oh, a folded pocket. You know, this is with one of the corner pieces to wrap around a page. So a page wrap around. Okay, that actually goes on there, but because of my angle, there we go. Um, a page wrap around, and it's got a belly band, and I just tucked a little notepad inside the belly band with a pocket on the top. So another way to use it. Here it is as a belly band again. So I would glue the back down, you open it, and there's a little notepad there. Here's another belly band, just a super simple way with a strip at the top wrapped around. So this would be glued down onto my page as a belly band or a side tuck. And then I just tuck a little notepad in the top of it. So it's a removable notepad. You can use it as is or use it as a refill. Here's one, a super simple one, with a tag that has been turned into a belly band and with a little itty bitty notepad tucked into the top. And then I just used a die cut tuck it in there as just a little bit of decoration. Now I could have put it on the front, but I also can tuck it in here like this to be used as however want you want. Uh, let's see, this one is, okay, here you go. This is a double notepad. So here is a notepad. Oh, this one's just a journaling card, excuse me. This one's just a journaling card. But this is in a notepad format with little bits of lace and paper underneath. So there's that. Here is the notepad on journaling card. So this is a journaling card with a little notepad on the front as part of the decoration. Here is one that's a two-sided. So it goes, it's what I call a Tracy two-side. It goes over the top of your page and you lift it up and then there's a tuck spot on the side and then there's a scrappy notepad and then you've got decoration on the front and a tag spot on the back. So again, just a notepad utilized in a little bit of a different way. This is a front pocket with some transparency and a notepad. This is, these were matchboxes that um, instead of using it as a matchbox, I folded it to use as a hidden try and gatefold. And there's a little notepad right in there. Here it again is again on the top of a tag, but I, the sticker, I just cut the sticker so that it would be on both pieces. So it, it still lifts up on the front piece, but it kind of blends into the background of the tag. Here is just a partial. It's hidden underneath of a, a flip. So I glue this on as a pocket. There's journaling space here and then another notepad here is more journaling. This is a transparency film with a really large dried flower in it, but you flip it over on the back and there's a notepad. So I could tuck this into a spot and then instead of a standard journaling card on the back, you've got a notepad journaling card. Here is just the things that you use in a three ring binder created into a little notepad to tuck into a spot. And again, this one's the same idea, a little notepad on top of a pocket. So this would be glued into the journal as a pocket. This library card would go in the back and there's your notepad. Same idea with this one, some transparency, a notepad and a pocket in the back. So a lot of function with just one little piece and flip over notepad and again a flip over notepad a tag with a little pocket and a little notepad inside the pocket so a lot of times when we have pockets on our tags um, you know we'll put something simple in there well this is an actual I mean, it is simple but it's a notepad so that you can um, have a place to journal this is one of those multi pockets and so you've got journaling card journaling card journaling card and on the very front there's a little notepad here's another one with a note so this is an insert you've got the transparency film with dried flour underneath and the back is just a note a little notebook um, i use them in larger mates like this is a you know it's got a trifold and then there's a pocket and a tuck and a couple pockets with a notepad in the middle it's just super handy to have and you can use it and here's a belly band so it's got a little bit of everything it's got a belly band it's got a side tuck it's got a notepad it's got two pockets and it's got a cluster on the front just a clip here so that'd make a great gift or an insert for a journal if you're wanting something a little bit bigger window with notepad on the back. 
and this one is just slightly different. So there's a notepad on the top of this pocket and then a tag goes into the pocket and the tag go holds the notepad down. So it would hold your notepad in place. Um, again, just a little bit of a notepad that doesn't take up the full space listed here. I wanted the difference in the height and this is the scrap that I had left. So you've got several of you know, these things made up and you can just put them on top of a envelope or a tag or you know this one's a, a pocket right you can put it on top of anything here's a super super basic one just a fold over with a notepad on the top and room for a tag or something there this one's a notepad within a notepad so this is just a fold over what I call um, rectangular strip with a notepad on the front and then you lift the card out and then you've got a notepad inside so lots of writing space on this one. Same idea here, a notepad is part of the flip up and then a notepad or a note card inside of your lift up pocket. Same idea here, just a, a variation of the same thing, journaling card in the back and then just a removable notepad just again like the ones we had there that gets tucked right inside the pocket. and a notepad on front of a journaling card, a notepad on the side of a journaling card. So this is a really simple journaling card with some uh, coffee dyed tracing paper and I can put a couple tags in it. And I still have plenty of room for my notepad. So multifunctional. Uh, same idea here, this is just a notepad inside of a simple pocket. You lift it up and there's some lined journaling paper. I'm only showing the variety of these so that you can see there's lots of options. Here's a journaling card with a tuck spot on the back. I'd folded it over and then there's the insert is just holds it inside in place on that side pocket and then there's a notepad on top of that. Bookmark with a notepad on it. So you've got a journaling space on the back of your bookmark and then you've got a notepad on your front. Lift up here with a notepad in a pocket so there's a journaling tag, there's a, a notebook or a yeah, notebook on that and then it flips over and can be either a tuck or a pocket or something that you clip into your journal. And here, this was the same idea as another one, just a little notepad going sideways notepad inside of a glassing bag. So this is just a glassing bag, what I call a page insert. This would be sewn into a signature and you've got a scrap pad on the front. You've got a little tuck right here. It op The bag opens up so you've got a space here. The bag opens up in the back so you've got space there and then you still have a place to decorate on the very back. So these are fabulous page inserts. Notepads come in handy there so you can decorate as you go what your journaling pieces are. Just tear off little bits and make it functional. Here's a, uh, what I would probably do is a more full size piece if I wanted to cover more of a page. Glue this down and I can have a side tuck or a top pocket and then it's got a little pocket on the side, some window film or transparency, a tag with a very thin notepad. Same idea here, almost identical but just slightly different orientation. The decoration on this piece of paper was pretty so I kept it intact and there you go. All right, so a lot, a lot of options. And I showed you those to show you how versatile these just little tags or notepads can be. The way I create them is this usually. Now I've got my scrap bin of bits after I've thrown them in here. And if I'm going to do this type where I just have leftover pieces and I want to put them into um, a notepad. You know, you can fold this and make it a concertina, but you can also just, and the notepad doesn't have to be huge. So let's just say I need something for a two inch notepad. That's a very fairly common size. Let's see if I can move that over so you can see. So I'll cut my paper. This is just a leftover bit that I had from another piece. I'll cut the paper scraps up to the right size and they don't have to be perfect by any means but you know just about the same size and let's say I needed something for a two inch wide journal or um, not even a journal 
not a two inch wide journal, uh, a journal that I needed a two inch wide notepad for. So I cut them all to the same size. I can glue the tops. I can staple the tops. I can sew the tops or I can get a piece of cardstock. Let's go with, I'll move this back up there. I'll get a, just a piece of leftover cardstock or scrap paper or something. Well, here, this one might be a good one. Oh, well, it's not exactly the right size, but you can see. Okay, here you go. This is a piece of um, leftover bit of embossed cardstock. I can fold that in half. I would probably, so I can make up a li make a lift up journaling spot, and then I can glue, staple, or sew the notepad inside. And it's it's truly just that simple. And then I can ink this or or do whatever I want with it. But that's how I make almost all of my notepads. Most of them are done in advance, unless I've got a piece like this, and I'll come in and and make them as needed. The other way I often do it is I will grab scraps. So when my scrap light paper scrap bin gets a little full, I'll just come and grab a variety of scraps. Like that would be a great one. Um, I like that. So maybe I'll put that there. Uh, oh, that's some lined paper. Oh, that's pretty. Um, I like the different colors. So I'll tear something. Uh, I vary the sizes a little bit. So the scrap pads I'll do. Oh, those are the same color. So I'll mix up the colors, right? Uh, maybe I'll put that one there. And oh, that's a good color. And then I would just trim down or tear down this. Let's go like that. And let's go like that. And then I can again staple. Here, I'll just staple this one rather than sew it. Sometimes I'll add, you know, like something like this. I don't even know why that was in there. I can use this to hold it in place. And in fact, you know what? For the sake of this, I think I will. All right, that's just just grabbed scraps, and you can see this took seconds. It didn't have to be okay, but I am me, so I'm going to ink this because it'll bother me if it's not inked. Of course, you don't have to ink it. That just happened to be there, so I grabbed it. Um, you can use anything or nothing. You can put a piece of lace there if you like. Um, just the sky's, oh, I put my stapler here. The sky's the limit with these choices. And then I'll match the edges up there at the top. And I'll put, trim that so it doesn't stand out. And I'll put this here just to kind of act like an anchor. And I will staple that in place. And there, just like that, is a scrap notepad that I can tuck into almost anything. It is a super quick, I don't want to say mindless, but it's one of those tasks that doesn't require a lot of thought or a lot of planning. You can just make them up as you have extra bits of scrap paper and then keep them on hand so they're ready when you're putting a journal together. And one of the biggest reasons I like these is when I am assembling a journal, um, I find that it's distracting if I have to stop frequently to find more pieces to fill up the journal. So there you go. There are my notepad suggestions. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do next for Mass Make March, but definitely something. And I will, I finished the first of the inserts for the file folder journal. So the second insert for the file folder journal, I've got it ready to go and prepped and I will have that done soon. Another question that I got is, this is a piece, I was watching a Gail video, a Gail Gustinelli video after she came back from a retreat and she had a piece tucked in there and she didn't show how to make it, at least I don't believe she has, but um, I saw it and I looked at it and I thought it was really cute. So I, I tried to, to make one and I've been asked to show how I make it. Now, I want to make it clear, I got inspired by Gail, but I don't know exactly how Gail made it. So mine may be slightly different than hers because, like I said, I just saw what she did. I didn't see how she did it. So mine may look quite differently, but it was absolutely inspired by Gail, and so I want to make sure and give her credit. But I will do... Um, a video on how I made this very soon also because I'd been asked and I keep meaning to and I keep forgetting so that's coming very soon 
All right. Thank you very much for watching, for your kindness, for your patience as I um, took a little longer than I wanted to for the first one sheet wonder for the file folder journal. But the other one will be done this week for sure. And then we'll put the signature in and we'll move forward from there. Heck, I really like the way this looks together and it's the right size. So maybe I will put this little notepad inside this journal. All right. Take care. Thank you for watching and happy creating.